The Dorset Village Library held its second annual Drag Queen Story Hour on Saturday, July 22nd, welcoming back Anita Cocktail, a drag performer from Brandon, Vermont, along with her friend Mama Dukes. The pair read stories and performed for over an hour for a full house inside the library, much to the enjoyment of their audience. The art form of drag has been around for a long time and has been traced back to ancient Athens when women were prohibited from acting in theatrical productions and men performed those roles. My mom and dad have been best friends since first grade. They really like each other. It's kind of gross. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> There's a lot of kids in our family. Mom and dad just keep coming home with more. More recently, drag queens have been front and center on the culture wars of current years. So to learn more about the art form and what it's like to perform in drag, we chatted with Anita Cocktail, a.k.a. Tanya Durant, before she and her partner went on stage. I've been doing drag for six years. And how did you get started in it? I've always been interested in drag. I've always liked um, the transformation of it, and the costumes and the makeup and the wigs and stuff. But I never thought being in a... Um, biological female that I would be able to do it because I was always grown up to know that drag queens are men who dress as women and perform and um, and then I met my drag mother Lucy for Matrix um, six years ago who said why can't you do it you know drags for anybody you can do anything you want and you know stuff everything's opened up so much more so I'm like okay I want to try it and I tried it and I loved it and I love meeting all the new people and the new venues we go to and everything. So it was just like, okay, let's do it. So yeah, we're going to be reading books to um, children and adults. Um, last time we did it here last year, we had a mixture of adults and kids, which was great. And we just read books about acceptance and about being yourself and, you know, um, things like that. And then we are also going to do a couple performances, like do some lip sync numbers and sing and we dance with the kids and things and then afterwards we usually do a craft with them and things so that's what we typically do as far as the <clears throat> story hour thing and then we also do other performances in different venues and clubs we've done all age shows where it's all just dancing and lip syncing to numbers and some people live sing and then we also have our adult only theme that we do but yeah I love doing it for the kids and coming to the library like this and seeing the the kids just light up seeing the different costumes because you never know what we're going to show up in. <laughs> so what do you make about all the controversy about drag performances that's going on this year at this point? I, mean, it, I don't know. I just think it's nuts. It's like, you know, they got to have find something to complain about. I swear to God, you know, it's like this has been going on for centuries, you know, so everybody grew up with this kind of stuff on TV, you know, Bugs Bunny dressed in drag, you know, uh, Robin Williams as Mrs. Doubtfire. There's all these different ones that did. Three's Company, Jack the Ripper was, you know, Jack Ripper was supposedly pretending he was gay so he could live with two women, and, you know, that were friends and stuff. All of a sudden, it's just, you know, we need something to complain about. We need something that's not norm. And I just think it's ridiculous. Let people be who they want to be. We're not hurting anybody. You know, it's not a crime. We're not hurting anybody. We're out here living our true selves. And, you know, especially the trans community and stuff, they're being who they are. You know, they're not complaining because you're straight. So why are you complaining because they're trans? I just, I don't understand it. <laughs> Last year, the Dorset Library held two drag queen themed events, the Children's Story Hour and another one last September. Stephen Niles, one of the staff at the Doors of the Library, coordinated the events and told us more about them. Um, I had always wanted to do a drag story hour, or host one, um, and the opportunity came up here to be able to have one. We got a generous grant from the Vermont uh, Humanities Council, and we were able to do both a drag story hour for the kids and a drag show for the adults in the fall. So it just kind of helped out and turned into a summer of inclusivity and more representation. So the idea was to kind of just expose more people to what it's about and mm -hmm. demythologize the whole thing? Yes, and uh, because, you know, Vermont is not as isolated as it, as it used to be, so, you know, people need to expand their minds and meet new people. Ooh. Yep, Missouri. last year uh, we had over 60 people show up for the Drag Story Hour. I haven't counted how many people are here today. We had over 80 people show up for the Drag Show. 
in uh, September. This year, we're counting on equivalent numbers, if not more. Yep. The we're having a drag and burlesque show the first week, first Saturday in October, and that is for 16 and older because it does have the burlesque elements to it. And uh, it's our Halloween kickoff. So it starts our full month of Halloween celebrations leading up to our haunted house at the end of the month on Halloween. Back in the reading room, the audience of all ages seemed to enjoy Anita Cocktails and Mama Duke's reading hour on Saturday. And Halloween isn't all that far away either. For the GMAT TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.